Hang We're on, fine now. We, we, yeah, but we, should we start the local recording? Oh yeah, restart the recording. Okay. You can we just reset timer? Right? Yeah. Working on that. Uh, I'm resetting the timer. Yeah. All right, are we all good to go now? Yes, we're good to go whenever Hero starts. Okay, I'm just ready. Just give me the go. Yeah. All right. Just, yeah. Start now. Okay, start. Yeah, start. Okay, I can. I can. can okay. Well, here I am Hero Fred, and welcome to Poké Park Wii Pikachu's Adventure. This game is a really sweet game. Um. It's so what? Sorry. Let's go. No, keep going. Okay, so sweet that it may give you diabe diabetes. So, what is this all about? Uh, my goal in this game is, as Pikachu is going to, Mew is going to put it out during this cutscene, is to save the Poké Park from destruction. How am I going to do it? Well, the 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 way Pokémon has shown it, to how to do it, by beating the crap of other Pokémon and and using that to make them our friends. That's how Pokemon's work, right? Uh, this is a third-person adventure game, and while this doesn't have the same RNG that the main series has in the term of stats and stuff, it probably has even more RNG in some degree, and I'm going to explain it later on. But for now, we get to the cutscene, and for the best finger exercise you will ever have, because the way to uh, advance the text fast is to simply match the one and two button on the Wiimote. Because I want to hit every single text box on the earliest possible frame. So I have to match both buttons. I hear Pikachu Mew explain us that we need to collect 14 prison <coughs> pieces to save Poké Park from destruction. So here Sounds we... Simple enough. Yeah, see, it's really simple, the plot. I keep here chat uh, welcome us to Poké Park. We are still not in Poké Park yet. This is the tutorial about the controls of the game. Really simple. You move with the D-pad. You jump with the two button. You dash with the one button. And you use the Thunderbolt with the A button. This game can only be played with the Wiimote sideways, as if it was an NES controller. Now here comes the first part of RNG. If this was a world record attempt, if this box doesn't give me a red berry, I will reset. Why? Because the berries are very important in this run. I need most of them, most of the ones I need, I get them from befriending Pokemon or by playing minigames. But even then I need 70 berries from boxes. The green ones are worth 10 and the red ones are worth 50. Each extra box that I have to break, it's about uh, between 8 and 10 seconds, depending the box. Because some of them give you more, knock you further back than other ones. So in an ideal rule run, the first two berries that I picked are red. Uh, not so much this time around. Now this chat dot has four different <coughs> patterns that he can follow. He gave me the second fastest, which is going to the right. The fastest one will be going a little bit to the right and then to the left. The third one will be a little bit to the left and then to the right. And the slowest will be all to the left. So do you want to explain sort of like the different kind of skill games since you're just at a chase, I know, and there's other ones? Sure. Uh, well, this is the first skill game. You need to play different ones to be friend Pokemon. The first one is chase, which is pretty simple. You have to tackle the Pokemon you are chasing. Uh, for the, the rest of them I'm going to be explaining as I make them. But most of the games that I want to play are either chases or battles. The rest of the mini games are really slow. Now movement is really important in this run. What I did to get to this cutscene, I tried to hit the loading trigger for it in the earliest possible place. The, the trigger for this cutscene is not a square or circle, it's kind of like a diamond shape. So I hit, try to hit the tip of the diamond. 
One thing that you're going to see me do a lot when talking to Pokemon is when I'm running, I jump just before talking to the Pokemon. That is because you need to be almost stopped when you talk to to be able to talk to them. And the fastest way to kill my momentum is by jumping. Now, how many Pokemon, roughly, do you need to, like, befriend in the entire run? Because I know there's, like, isn't there, like, 170 total or something like that? I finished the run with about 83 friends. It's and about... it's, like, 170 total or something like that. Right? Yeah, it has a lot of Pokemon. Like... You need, like, about half of them. Yeah, um, to... I... Yeah, for example, to do the the hundred the difference between the any percent and the hundred percent <coughs> routes, it's four hours. That means that by getting the extra Pokemon, I add four hours to the run. That's how many Pokemon there are. It adds four hours. Yeah. Or the run becomes four hours. No, no, no. It adds four hours. The oh God, the hundred percent wow. run is seven and a half hours long. Jeez. I had no idea. I don't want to say 100% of it when I own the game, but I don't recall. Yeah, the biggest issue is that you need to do the minigames many times to get the legendary Pokemon. That is oh, why it takes forever. Oh, right. That's the problem. It's like each minigame you get to choose your Pokemon, and there's like 14. And then after doing the minigame with all 14, then you get like a legendary for yeah. the minigame or something like that. That is correct, and that is why it takes forever to do it. Oh, okay, that explains it. I was wondering, I was like, how does that add up to four hours? But in reality, it's probably like, add one hour for most Pokemon, add three hours for like, what, 14 legendaries? That is correct. That is That's so like, oh, great. Now, uh, another thing that in this run, in any percent, is not permitted the use of passwords. Because those are external means of the game. The passwords give Pikachu a surfboard, a snowboard, and balloons, so he can participate in the attractions he no long he normally cannot do. For a hundred percent, that is required to use the passwords, because you need to have the entire mini games cleared. Now this first mini game, it's simple. I just simply waggle the Wiimote as fast as I can to get to the end. Yeah, I will say, as this game, like, it is actually a really fun game. Like, I remember when I played it, I had a blast playing it. It was very different from many other Pokemon games in general. And it was just sort of like a new idea that they played with, and I think it worked out very well. Wow, I just tied my best time in these minigames. Six <laughs> seconds with seven and nine. That you is... tied your record? Yeah. Nice. Any time below 7 seconds is good. I just timed the best right. I ever done in this minigame. Alright, hang on. Now, after doing this, I get my first prison piece. And then... Uh, uh, Trico and Monkey are going, are going to come and say, Hey, you know what? <laughs> Venusaur said that it's forbidden to do attraction in this zone. So... Because you broke the rules, we are going to take Chikorita captive because she's the one that made you do it. So, right, now we have uh, to... I'm going to be right back, alright? Something came up, I have to go for a quick sack, alright? Okay. So now that they took Chikorita, we have to rescue Chikorita. So, let's go there. Let's see what we can do. Okay, here I'm going to talk to Trico and he's going to say, Hey, you want to go to where Venusaur is? You will have to make uh, Tortwig beat Bulbasaur's attraction. It's not going to happen because he's too slow. So, we'll have to make it happen. And this is when in the run we will start making friends. We already saw one way to making friends, which is playing chase. With these Munchlags right here, we are going to be... Uh, learning about a new way to do it which is there is certain Pokemon in each, each area that you need to gift a big berry to make them your friends Munchlax is one of them and now after this I'm going to be go with friend Tortwick which I need to advance in the plot now you're going to see me like 
uh, Rob said before, we are going to be making need to make another wall friends. Back. Welcome back. Because some attractions have a quota of friends that you need to have. The first quota is 25 friends for the fourth attraction. Okay, right. Tortwig here gave me one of the worst patterns he can give me. It's going to waste like three seconds. In a minute, I'm gonna have to go for a quick minute again. Sorry, I got a call that I need to take. Uh, no worries. The best pattern Tortu can give me is going a little bit to the right from where it starts and then to the left. Now, after this, I need to befriend Pokemon. This is when I start to befriend Pokemon that are not required to the plot. I need to befriend both Pachirisu and Bonieri. Even though Bonieri was in my path before, I was not going to be able to befriend it before. Befriending Tortuk is which uh, triggers that. Igual Pachirisu, the same as Tortuk and Chatot, is going to be another chase. Like I said, it's the fastest way to befriend Pokemon. Ah, monster comes in my way. Now I need to befriend Bonieri. Bonieri is important for a couple of reasons. So where oh, is in a real spot? The first one because, well, I need a friend. And the second one because befriending Bonieri unlocks two more Pokemon in the area. Unlocks Lotat and Shinx. Both of which I need to befriend. And holy crap, this pattern is great. One of the best patterns I've ever seen from Bonieri. Or now I need to replay the Bulbasaur attraction. This is the only uh, attraction that I need to replay. The rest of the mini games are going to be only one time, one time only. But the story demands this to be twice. Now I need to get the bonus berries with third tweak. That means getting the bonus berries doesn't mean that I need to win the race. I just need to beat it in a certain time to get those berries. And it's very important for me to get them every single attraction. Because the very route depends on, depends on it. Alright, I'm back for the long haul now. I'm really sorry. Nice. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Just that I... I'm doing the torturing mini, the Bulbasaur mini game, so I kind of. Ah, uh, you need to focus. That's fine. You know, not focus, just I cannot tag while shaking the Wiimote. Oh, okay. 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 Right. Just wanted uh, to make sure that nothing major happened. Yeah, I didn't want to <laughs> to make that pun. Thanks, you guys, for doing it for me. I tried the hardest to not do it. For not saying it. Okay, the Lotus were in bad positions. So I'm not going to defend them yet. The, probably the, the most important thing about running this game is that you need to learn when, or when, when to or where to not get a Pokemon. So you need to see him in the distance and see, okay, is it worth taking the detour or no? That's one of the most important things on running this game. Now, I hit that, that tree, gave me a green berry, which is bad if I were going for world record and got Caterpie. We are going to come back to that Caterpie in a, in a while. So how do you decide which Pokemon are faster than others? Because I mean, in this kind of a game, most of the Pokemon are all really quick. I spent uh, have quite a while routing every Pokemon, like from a, a neutral position, how long it took me to reach them. And then after reaching them, how long it takes me to be, actually befriend them. I compare all the times with all the Pokemon, and that is how I came out with this route. I see. I was just wondering that, because okay. I, mean, see, I okay. remember all of them take less than a minute. Yeah, okay, now after the monkey fight, I got a frame perfect dash. You have only one frame to hit the dash that saves half a second. There are a lot of places you can do those kind of frame perfect dashes, but that is the only place where it saves time. 
Because the rest of the places you only hit a wall or hit another Pokemon when you do it. Whereas here, you're just hitting open air. Yeah. Now we are going to reach Venusaur. I remember in the gatekeepers, that's what they're called, right? Or is that just my term for them? Uh, the attraction, the area keepers. Oh, the area keepers? Yeah. I was close. The area keeper of the middle zone is Venusaur. Here Venusaur, after talking to him, says, hey, maybe playing attractions is not a bad idea, but let's see, if you want to save Chikorita, you have to beat my attraction. To beat my attraction, you have to beat both Kragong and Spiro. So That'd let's go to that. <laughs> With uh, Kragong, we're going to see a third way to get to make friends. We already saw Chase. We saw giving them big berries. The third one is going to be battles. Now there are two right. te techniques I use for, for battles. One that I use for Pokémon that have two life bar, and one that I use for Pokémon that have three life bars. First, since Crown has two, we're going to use the first one, which I hit with a tackle, run to them, wait for them to attack, move to a side, and counter attack. That is the fastest way to beat every single Pokémon that has two life bars. That triggers Scyther, but we are not going to be friending Scyther. Oh, I like Scyther. It's way too slow, and, and I cannot befriend it any, right now. I, I, I don't have the stats to befriend it. Okay, now um, we need okay. Caterpie. Where are you? Here I am. Caterpie is a run killer. Yeah, Probably... Caterpie is kind of hard. Oh crap, I did say no. Hey, Robodoki. Yeah, Caterpie is the oh. hardest <laughs> in the run. Is the wrong either? Uh, yeah, Caterpie, I mean... Yeah. I don't know how you'll ever catch up to Caterpie. But did you just time world record, or...? What? Sorry? Did you just time world record on getting Caterpie, or...? No, it's, it was actually slow. Uh, the best you can do it, the timer doesn't even appear on screen. Wow. Timer doesn't appear. Done. Caterpie is a Pokemon that yeah. I want to be f to remove from the route because it has the Butterfree cutscene. Previously, we used to be friend uh, Butterfree, but we don't. We no longer do that. But even with that, the fact that you can get the 50 berries from that tree, it, it makes it impossible to to remove. Because every other box that isn't like this tree has a high chance of getting me of giving me a red berry not every single box or tree have the same chances to get it at least from what i uh, the data i collected i hit every single tree and box about 200 times to get some rough percentages <laughs> oh my god i don't know how you could hit a tree 200 times in a row <laughs> No, and I had to I hit the tree, go out of the area, return, and hit it again. Oh, oh, so even better. Uh, I would have gone crazy. Well, what you, what, you probably, what you probably did was hit all the trees at once and then exit and then enter it again. Yeah, well, in, this okay, is a, another way to get uh, friends, which is uh, playing obstacle courses. We will not see do this much in the run because it's low. And one thing that happened in during a practice section that I haven't been able to replicate is that I managed to skip to skip one of the platforms in that. I don't know how the hell I did it, and I haven't been able to replicate it. It doesn't save that much time, can. but I don't know how the hell I did it. Oh yeah, it's one of those mysteries where it's like, well, how if it's doable and it saves time, you want to know how to do it so you can do it for runs. So how did I do that? Yeah. Yeah, okay, now this Trico is a troll. The, of all the Pokemon that I can get at this point before the Garos attraction, Trico is the slowest I get. 
but he can also be one of the fastest. Right now he gave me a troll pattern, which was a little bit slow. That is another Pokemon that I've been looking forward to remove from the route and haven't been able to. Because, for example, Good you have the them. iPhones in here, which are slow as hell. And now that Isn't I... Trico one of the two Pokemon required by Venusaur? No. You need Grogong or... and Spearow. Oh, Spearow was the other one. But it was Krogan and Trico, my bad. Okay, now I'm going to be doing uh, the Venus attraction. Again, if I were going for a PV attempt or a record attempt, I would pick Monkey for this because he has the the shortest flight in this mini game. But since it's a marathon, I want to go for the safest, which is getting Krogan, because the sweet spot <laughs> of Monkey is really small. This is Venusaur Swing. It consists of me swinging on a vine and jumping a certain distance. So you said you need a total of 70 berries over the course of the run? Those are from boxes. Over the, I need over, like, it's, I think, like 3,000 berries or something like that. In total. And why you just get a bunch of them from doing chases and battles and stuff yeah. like that? I get most of them, but even with that, I haven't managed to make those 70 into the Pokemon route. That's good. From the previous okay. route, uh, it was... Uh, I needed 110. And now we go be the second... The second attraction, which gives us the second prison piece. So now we have two of the 14 pieces. That is correct. All right. Now the next, now we go to the water zone, right? Memory serves right for me. Yeah. First we go yeah. to the hub area, which is the meeting place, and then we go to the RNG beach. Oh, RNG beach. Oh no. Oh, is it because of the uh, chasing the flying Pokemon? Yeah, I need two. I need okay. a, one flying Pokemon in that area. I remember that even just casually trying to get the flying Pokemon was annoying because they just randomly land, right? Yeah, it's not only that, but the Pokemon I need has the highest area where you can be. I drew maps of every Pokemon, like where, in which areas I can find them. And the one I need, which is Staravia, has the highest area in the entire beach. So it can be <laughs> anywhere on the beach. So just finding Staravia is a challenge on its own. So when you're doing the beach, if you see Staravia, would you just drop everything and just focus on getting Staravia then? Or yeah, would you just keep in mind where you saw Staravia? You would just get Staravia immediately? Yeah, I get it immediately because every time I talk with a Pokemon that triggers a, a, a mini game or any, activate any cutscenes, all the Pokemons get shuffled around. So if I oh, see really? it, I have to get it. I did not know that. So you could be right next to Staravia doing a mini game with another Pokemon like, I don't know, Corfish. And after doing that, Staravia could be on the other side of the beach. That is correct. And the reason I need to be Staravia. I'm going to explain in more detail when I get to the next area, but Staravia is, is essential. Like, I can replace other Pokemon in the route. Staravia is like the only Pokemon in the entire route I cannot replace. I need to get it. Like, the entire well, route Staravia. is built it around Staravia. Why specifically Staravia? Because if I befriend a Pokemon in one area, it counts as a skill game one on all the areas the Pokemon is in. And one of the Pokemon that I'm going to befriend in the in the uh, in the ice area requires a certain amount of victories in this in that area. And Estarabia is also in that area. So that means that I have to get one less win in that area if I get Staravia sooner. I see. So it like okay. So it just saves time like that. That's an interesting point because I never Casually, you would never pick up on something like that. But 
Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. Hearing this in the hub area is kind of a tutorial on what all these Pokemon in here are doing. Dribbling Siri to tra transport me from place to place. Uh, oh my god. Miss Rebels oh is only. Oh my god, Dying talk. Yeah. Miss Rebels is only for. Uh, what? Uh, taking photos. Uh, this is not like something you'll ever need, but it's required to progress. And ah, I forgot to show you the photo. But I love pictures. Yeah, and and then you need to talk to Electabuzz, which upgrades your speakers to Thunderbolt, which we are not doing in this run. We are only going to be buying upgrades for speed. Just for speed, not for attacks. The yeah. speed is more uh, running in it than battling and attacking, but the speed. Helpful to have. That is correct. Not to mention that the speed also helps out with chases, which I'm pretty sure chases are the main, uh, the main way of befriending Pokemon, right? There is, it's actually impossible to beat the game if you don't grade your speed at least to level 2. It's impossible, it's impossible. to beat. Impossible? Really? Yeah. It's actually what? impossible to beat the game. That that sounds like a challenge. Like you can be, you can get lucky with the final boss, and, and beat the game, but there's you cannot catch it if you don't have level two speed at least. You have to be very lucky. The final boss is one quick sob. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, here is the RNG beach, and I need to befriend four Pokemon in this area. Azuril, Slowpoke, Totodile, and Staravia. And all four of them love to be all over the place in this, play in this area. This is where most of my resets come from, this, this area. Well, hopefully Staravia is really kind and decides to show its face very quickly. And hopefully everything else. Okay, I'm sorry to see my path, which is up. good. I kind of can hear an echo of me in one of your mics. I don't know which one of you guys. Hopefully it's not mine, but it might be. Uh, pretty sure it's not mine. Um, is this any better? It's very slight. It's mostly when I speak a little bit loud when I hear it. Well, as long as it's not too frequent. Okay. And now the game was trolling me right there. Staravia was right in front of me, but because there was a cutscene, it's not going to be there. Now this is the game trolling me. Now, fun fact, I tried to beat this game blindfolded, and this is the final boss in that. Corsola. <laughs> it's you the only thing. You tried beating the game blindfolded. Yeah. Oh my god, I don't and... even know how you would go about attempting that. Uh, two. And the only thing I cannot do is the quizzes. Everything else I can do blindfolded. But not the quizzes. No, because the questions are random, and the order of the answers is also random. Oh. So I basically, to get the, the quizzes, I have to just mash A and hope all of them are A. <laughs> That's like, what, a 1 in 9 chance or something like that? Yeah, pretty much. No, it's definitely more rare No, it's than more that. than that. It's more than 1 in 9. Like, 1 in 27, I think? I don't know. One in big number. Yeah. One in big number, yes. Unlikely. Like, I can do all the mini games. I can fight any Pokemon because I can I can find e every Pokemon in this game because every Pokemon have a different cry and have a different sound of steps to them. And each terrain also sounds differently. So it's really easy to locate Pokemon by sound. 
Flying Pokemon becoming a little bit of a, a nuisance in that case, Brad. Why? But other than that, not so much of a big deal. So, do we have to rescue Why Not? Or yeah, that is correct. That is our next task. Okay. Uh, now I wasn't sure if that was actually something required by the game, or is, if you could just leave Why Not crying on the beach the entire game. No, uh, we have to do it. We uh, need to go that talk with. Because that's out of the way. Yeah, we need to go talk to Bidoof to do it. Bidoof is in the previous area. And you can't befriend Bidoof until you talk to him, right? Yeah, that is until correct. You talk to Why Not. That is correct. Bidoof is not there until you talk to Why Not. Yeah, that's fortunate. <laughs> like, really? This just game, gonna, it's sort of like... Slowpoke is just a little bit less difficult than Caterpie. Okay, yeah, this I don't... game it just sort of has you running all over the place the entire time, really. Yeah, and and that is probably why I prefer it over the second game. I also appear on Pocket Part 2, but we have removed so many Pokemons in that run that you're basically just go from Story Trigger to Story Trigger to Story Trigger, and that's it. You do almost nothing. Because right. that game, it's really odd because it's like... By befriending Pokemon, you make this thing easier, right? Yeah. Where you have to, like, shake the Wii Remote. So, theoretically, if you could just shake the Wii Remote like a robot, then you could only befriend, like, what, one? Yeah, that, in, many, in many of the areas, I only befriend, like, one extra that I need from this. Like, you get a couple of Pokemon from the story, and maybe I get one extra to make it easier. Only one area I need to befriend a lot of Pokemon because that is, for some reason, is really hard to do. So I need to befriend almost all the Pokemon in the area. Okay, so now we go back. This is uh, this was a good second chance to get Butterfree in the previous route. But since because it usually spawns right bef behind you, but. But now Butterf that we don't, now the Butterfree is out of the route. There's yeah, because it's a, an annoying race, because you have to chase it, and it's constantly attacking you. So you cannot, you cannot chase it directly. And now we are going to one of the slowest parts of the run. We need to give uh, four pieces of lumber to Bidoof, so he can construct, he ha construct his house. Uh, there are exactly four pieces of lumber in the in the area, so the fast the, the only thing you can do to speed it up is get an optimal route to get it. And while getting this, I want to befriend Chimchar and Shinx. So is this the slowest Pokemon to befriend Bidu for? Is there one that's even slower? No, he's the slowest. Because you Bidu's need to do the this. Slowest. Okay. And this this force on by the game like you cannot progress in the game if you don't do it. Each area has a that is just a, yeah every, each area has a section where you have to carry something. That is in every single area of the game. Bidu has a magical power of turning a few sticks of wood into a big house and or a bridge. Oh, the house is not has nothing on the bridge. True, the bridge, I mean, it's what, like two pieces of lumber and he makes a giant, like, 50-yard long bridge plus? Yeah. Now, fun fact, I've hit this box, this tree that I passed through a couple of times, uh, like, uh, he did that tree, like, I don't know, 500 times, and never got a red berry. It's the only tree I have never been able to get a red berry on. I don't know if he simply doesn't spawn red berries, or simply was unlucky. That like would be I... pretty unlucky. Unlucky if. Yeah, that is why I never hit that times. in a run, because it's out of the way, and he doesn't give has a chance of giving me a red one. Okay. I don't hey, think... you never know. You should try it this time. It might be a Tom 501 that does it. <laughs> now, here is something interesting from the Pokemon. There are two things in this area. Pokemon from the same species can have different uh, text boxes. The one I talk actually has one less text box than the other one. Really? Yeah. 
And that comes I into play in the ice area. That is when that comes to play big, even more. I had no idea that there were different text boxes. My bad. Text boxes between different Pokemon of the same speed. I would have assumed that they would just program them all to behave the same. No. And uh, yeah, that is, that's something that happens. At first, I didn't know until there, uh, I saw a, a previous run of mine and, and noticed that, wait, that seemed to took longer than usually. And that's what I noticed that you actually have different text boxes. And I tried to see if I, there's a way to differentiate them before talking to them. Sadly, I don't, I don't know. They behave exactly the same. So when you got, you got the faster one in this case, right? Yeah. Say and like so probably it was pretty much just a, pretty much a coin flip where yeah. it's like eh, maybe I'll get it maybe I won't. In this case, it just saves frames because it's just one text box. It doesn't save much. In the case of the iceberg area, it saves in total about 30 seconds. Uh, I almost forgot to talk to Bidoof. You need to talk to them again so the Bidoof in the beach appears. Now I need to befriend Chimchar and Bibarel because I didn't get uh, Chimchar. Okay, Bibarel didn't troll. Bibarel is another one of those Pokémon that can be in almost e every place in the area, which is kind of annoying. But befriending him, it's really fast. I was gonna say Bibarel seemed very close. I'm luckily so. For Pokemon that charge at you, like Vibarrel is faster to do a Thunderbolt at the, at the second attack because you can hit them faster. Okay, now where are you, Chimchar? There you go. So far, all the Pokemon have been nice, not so out of the route, but we still have to get Staravia. <laughs> I have two more chances to get Staravia before I have to actively search for it. Well, hopefully you got it one of those two times, then. Okay, now in terms of the history of speedrunning this game, my first run of this was uh, almost four hours long. My route was horrible. I befriended like a hundred Pokemon because I didn't know the limits well enough. And but then I saw a, a speed run in in the speed in SDA in the forums that was two hours and twenty eight minutes in game time, and I was like, "Wow, this is fast." Okay, here's Staravia. And oh, you got Staravia. Yeah, and Wait. then. And then you just play the route, started doing runs, and keep lowering my time. Then I lowered it to 3 hours, then to 39, and I was stuck with in 232 for like 3 months. I could not get past that mark. And suddenly, I was, I, one night I was like, okay, let's do a run with no reset. And I tied the world record, but I, my time was 2 seconds lower on real time. And I was really pissed because it was for a stupid mistake I did. So I say was like, okay, you know what? I'm, let's do another run. The next run I did, I got 227, which is the actual nice. world record. Is that still world record or? Yeah, it's still world record. I have managed to improve the run in real time a couple of times, but still no in-game time. So that leads to my next question is, so in regards to running the game, it's really in-game time that matters, not RTI. That's only, mostly because the first run that was done was with in-game time. So we ju the rest of the people around just follow that logic. Okay, well, can't argue with that too much. And it also, d d as far as I know, doesn't affect loadings and, st and stuff like that, because I've seen emulator stuff. I've done a little bit of emulator. My emulator lags a lot, and doesn't. I don't see any changes in the in-game time. 
so it's really consistent. I cannot say the same about Poké Part 2. That is why this Poké Part 2 goes by real time. Okay, now that I, I know. It's a with Bidoof, uh, Sharpedo will not let the, make the bridge, so we have to beat Penniper's attraction. Because they say hey, you cannot compete in it because you cannot fly. But thankfully, we actually made some flying friends on the way. <laughs> That's good news. So this is the third attraction, correct? That is correct. I was gonna say, I don't think I blocked out during one or anything, but. So out of the 14 attractions, which one's your favorite? Uh, the one in the ace area. Alright. Trying uh, to remember them all, because it's been a while since I've played this game. The attraction, I just have to fly through these circles. Uh, no matter what Pokemon it is, the time is fixed, so I cannot speed it up. And it's so easy to get the points that I just get the Pokemon that is fastest to get in the menu, which is Spiro. Like, Staravia would make it easier to get more, more rings, but I don't need it. How many points do you need? 8,000. Oh, then you're already well past that. <laughs> oh, why? 9,000, no, nine, not 8,000, 9,000. Even still, I mean, you easily yeah. got that, 19,100. Yeah, only two of the attractions are actually hard. And I'm going to point them out oh. when I get there. Like, yeah. I've lost runs, that's not the only two attractions I've actually lost runs to. <laughs> Alright. Okay, now that we this, we have to start building bridges so we can read Garados. So, another section of carrying lumber to Bidoof. Thankfully, we already gave him one before Petty Protraction, so we only need to give him two more. And this was a little bit of an exploit of the game, because there are three pieces of lumber in this area. But by giving one before talking to Bidoof, it counts as, as if I already give it to, the, to him. And when I enter the attraction, it respawns that one, which is the closest one to Bidoof. That means that I can give him the closest piece of lumber twice. Instead yeah, of having to give, give him the, tr the three of them. That's actually really interesting, because... I would, a game like this, I mean... I never would have thought there'd be, like... an oversight like that, but... Just goes to show not every game, no matter what it looks like, I mean, everything has glitches and problems and stuff. More than a glitch is that every time you leave an area, everything in the boxes and trees uh, reloads. And entering attractions counts as leaving the area. I see. So I could get the same result by giving the closest one, take dribbling to another area, come back, and it will respond. Now this is a place where I have to give in two more so to build the bridges to reach Garados. And there's no way to speed up Pikachu's movement. Like no, I can mash everything. There's no way to speed it up. Other than just walking in a straight line, I assume. Yeah, which is harder than it seems because of using a D-pad. Yeah. And the D-pad on the Wiimote is really, really small. <laughs> yeah. I remember, because playing this game, sometimes, especially when you're doing chase, you need somewhat good movement. And if you... Sometimes you can just miss them by a foot, and then they're running the opposite direction. It's like, really? And if you hold the right or left too, too long on, the, on chases, it actually makes a sharp turn that it makes it even harder to get Pokemon. So you have to press forward and then just a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left to adjust. 
So can we just point out that with two small piles of lumber, Bidoof just made three bridges when with that same lumber, a carpenter probably couldn't make half a bridge. And not to mention, it came with flowers too. Oh yeah, it came with flowers. I, I wonder where the flowers came from. Okay, now I this comes considered that. with the Garo's attraction. Now, we got the battle for two reasons. One, it was one of the fastest to get, but it's not uh, essential because I couldn't get Tail or Wingle for the exact same time. And they gave me the exact same berries. But it has the other fact that it's kind of fast in this attraction. And this is one of the attractions you can actually save time. So he, we hit two birds with the same stone. Literally. It's the fastest one we can get. Because there's with my current stats I cannot get Flotzel or, or Vaporeon. So in this I just hold the, the two button and steer by tilting the Wiimote and going through the boosters. This attraction has the best music in the entire game by the way. I mean that's something that the Pokemon series as a whole has always been known for is having amazing music. Yeah sadly this game doesn't have that much of a good music. But the second one, man, the second one has an amazing soundtrack. I like, can't uh, think of a single Pokemon game that really has a bad soundtrack, so... Yeah, this is not bad, it's just underwhelming. <laughs> Compared to the second, like, Poké Part 2 does everything better than this game. Sadly, it's a really bad speedrun. The park so you're saying Poké Part 2 is better in every way, shape, and form, except for being a speedrun. That is correct. Not to mention that I haven't been able to route 100% the second game because I need way too many berries. I, don't, I need almost 100,000 berries to get 100% in the game. Wow. Okay, now that we got that attraction, we need to come back to Feraligator. And Feraligator is another guy that loves to kill my runs. Because I usually forget to speak to him after this cutscene. <laughs> You need to speak to Bye. him so you can befriend him. Yeah. And then I, I go later and then, wait, where am I missing a Pokemon? And then I look at my friend list and it was for Alligator because I forgot to talk to him. That has happened way too many times that I would like to admit. Now with Alligator we are going to see the second uh, strat that I use for combat, which I call Bolt Tackle or Bolt Cancelling which I run, hit a Thunderbolt, and then a Tackle. This gives extra damage and also cancels the getting electrocuted, uh, electrocuted animation. So it's a lot faster. Because when you use Thunderbolt on a Pokemon, they first get the shock, then they fall over. And that wastes a lot of time. So by Tackle them, I cancel that animation. And I give them an extra damage, so win-win scenario. Now I just thought of something. So Piplup says that Blup's gonna bring this basket and balloon all the way back to the meeting place, right? Yeah. How how is Piplup carrying that thing? He's That's probably like having Feraligator eight carry Eight times the size of... Yeah, I was gonna say, because it's like eight times the size of Piplop. Yeah, believe me, that is not the most uh, illogical things you're going to see. As a matter of fact, you're about to see one of them in the next area. Oh, great. Because, you know, everyone loves Pokemon logic. Now, in this area, there are a lot of Pokemons that, in theory, will be faster. If I had at least dash level 2. Like for me it's impossible to be friends Fields and Kravis with my current speed. Like it's not possible to catch them. They are way too fast.
There's also Modkip. Modkip is really slow because Modkip is a place, hide and seek. We haven't seen hide and seek, and for a good reason. Hide and seek is really, really slow. Not to mention, is it R actually, is it RNG dependent or do they hide in the same spot each time? Depends on the Pokemon. Some are RNG de dependent and some have certain spots. For example, play playing hide and seek with Psyduck has a 50% chance of it being directly behind you. Same with Sudowoodo. I think when I played this game casually, I want to say that Psyduck was right behind me and it took me like 40 seconds for me to find him because I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Like, it, not even hiding, just standing behind you. That's what Psyduck does. <laughs> Why not? So do you, do you not do Psyduck still, or...? No, it's way too slow, because it has a lot of text, and then it has a lot of text after getting it. It's way too slow. Now, and here so I want to befriend just... the Tedursas. So it's not... Because uh, one of both, like I said, same species, Different Pokemon, different text. Two of them play Quiz, one of them play Chase. I want to befriend the one that plays Chase. And there are three of them. <laughs> it's completely random. <laughs> now I, I use the cutscene of Glally to make pull me a little bit closer to him. That's what I go for this block in particular first, because after giving him to, to Glally, it's going to build an igloo. I don't know. I don't know with which what uses to build them but he does with that just one ice block pulls one egg limb yep with some, tor with some torches oh with torch <laughs> just the power of believing apparently you just gotta believe now here is also an utility and again same species, different text boxes. This activity takes about 20 seconds longer to get than the one I'm going to get. Just from text boxes. Apparently chat's saying that the stream is really quiet. Uh, I'm not sure if there's too much that it's already at max volume, so... I'm going to try to roll, to raise my my levels. Okay, hopefully that fix it. I have no idea. Okay, now I model the igloos, and he told me I need you need frozas to get mammoths. When okay, now I need a Tedursa. Please be a good one. Yes, it's a chase one. If he talks about Frostlass, it's Chase. If he talks about Ursaring, it's Quiz. And you want the Chase one. Yeah. It's a lot faster. <laughs> like, I'm talking about maybe 30 to 40 seconds. Oh, wow. Because it's not just the so... questions, it's also the animation of getting a question right, and also the textbox after that. <laughs> now, I, I'm going to hit a box in here. Hopefully, it will give me a red berry. Nope, green. I have Terry berries now. Now, there's a tree here in the middle that triggers a cutscene, so I don't need, want to get close to the middle. It wastes about 12 seconds. Now, in this fight against Primplum, I have two strats depending on what, what he does. First I need to use my ball cancelling stuff. And then if he uses bubble beam, I rush at him. If he uses aqua jet, I have to take the hit. So it looked like that went the fastest way where you yeah. didn't have to take the hit. Yeah, that is the fastest way. I mean, I could dodge him if he does Aqua Jet, but it's faster to just take the hit because he stopped uh, way earlier. I need to hit the switch to make the chair lift go. And 
and now I can go to the lower area of this place. And in this area I want to get Throslas, Quagsire, and Octillery. First Frostlass. Frostlass again, another fight, which is very standard. I use Bolt Tackle and to win. And it's over. And then after this, I need to I need to be very lucky with the position of the Quagsires. Because Quagsire is a Pokemon that I have to give a big berry. So the closest they are to the big berry, the fastest they are. It doesn't matter which of the Quagsire I give the berry to, it, it just needs to be close to the box. And there is one kind of close, so it, that is good. That's good. So this is a case where both of them befriend you just by getting a big berry? Yeah. As opposed to like one wanting a big berry and one wanting to like play hide and seek. Yeah, all of them want that. That is now Octillery is the star of here. Like he's the one that the ones on the on the upper area have a lot of text. And this one is just like, hey, what a battle? Let's do this. So, as opposed to one with a lot of text, Octillery just gets straight to the point, luckily. Yeah, the other ones explain why they come here, why what, why they like battles and stuff. And this one is just like, hey, let's battle. Octillery is not here to play around. Well, and again. Now we need to go up. Be careful we're not touching the trigger for the cutscene. And go back to where Glally was. So the whole main thing, because if you think about it, each of the individual zones sort of has its own mini story going on. Yeah, in this one is that uh, Empoleon Frost his him in his place he, because he doesn't want to talk to anyone. And Frost Mammoth Wine, who is the only one that can break the, that door. So we have to save Mammoth Wine to be able to reach Empoleon in this area. And then in order to free Mammoth Wine, you need Frostlass to freeze the lake. That is correct. And, and in order to get Frostlass, you need Glalie to build the igloos. Ah, that's right. One thing so you need Glalie to get Frostlass and Mammoth Wine to get Empoleon. <laughs> now, you know all the thing we did for Glalie? We are still not friends with Glalie. I still need to make me friends really? with Glally. Nah. Wow. And you can only make friends with Glally after you trigger the Scott scene. Okay, Ursaring, please be nice. Okay, he's done mad. Ursaring is one of the few Pokemons that can be in a mad state. where they will just attack you and not And Garchomp. Now, interesting. In order to be able to hit that second Thunderbolt on our setting, I have to dash to the left. If I stay on place or dash to the right, that second Thunderbolt is not going to hit. Um, we are actually. Hang on a sec. I think we're having some difficulty, technical difficulties for. Okay, do I pause the game? Uh, no, keep going for now. Okay. Uh... I'm gonna hope... Okay, yeah, I'm live again. Alright, hang on. I think we might be good now. 
Okay, you, Are you at the Wii menu currently? Yeah, I am. Uh, I think we're good now. Okay. I didn't get fixed, that's all. I restarted the stream. Okay. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's good now. Uh, is it? Yeah, I think I, it is. I, I it's fighting, a little I, laggy, I just, but... I just made friends with Glally. Yeah, I think we're good now. I think... Yeah, that's good. Okay. Okay, now it's a good... That's good news. Now, here is Primeape. Like, this is why we needed uh, Staravia. Also, if we were to file any of the attraction in, in, in this place, runs practically over because I cannot befriend Primeape. <laughs> so I cannot fail any of the attraction in this place. In here also, I jump to be able to hit Primeape. If I dash to any of the dire direction or stay in place and use Thunderbolt, I'm not hitting Primeape. I need to jump to be able to do it. In the second hit. Now that I got all the Pokemon that I need, it's time to free Mammoth Wine. Now, what is the time right now? Uh, time's a little off, but it just passed an hour. Damn it, the dream is dead. My dream is to get sub one hour Iceberg Sun. Like, that is my goal for this game, one of my goals. Because I know it's possible, technically, in the, by... In, but with my routing nodes, it's possible to get sub one hour. So that I is mean, what... it's hard to tell. When you asked, it was like one hour, 40 seconds. And I'm pretty sure I started the timer like six seconds early, and then you paused, and I never paused the timer, so... Oh, okay, yeah, but it, yeah, but it's... It was probably really close, or but it's hard to say. Let's just say we did it. Sure. <laughs> Up one hour, let's go. We did it, boys. Nice For job. record. Sub one hour yes. will be will mean that I will be two minutes ahead of a record. So <laughs> I mean, maybe we have one hour, one minute at the end of Empoleon. For the record, boys. Not even halfway into the run. Or just about half. No, but it doesn't matter. Like, even if this is on record place, we are still not reaching the worst part of the run in terms of RNG. <laughs> we haven't reached it. We had really the good RNG part, was sorry. There's an emote for it. I have actually two emotes because of that area. Oh, yeah, two, two, yeah. <laughs> it's a really good part of the run. Okay, now here I grab Glally. Now, I tried to make Magikarp for this, you see in the marathon for this, but sadly I waste three minutes getting Magikarp, so that was a no. Because You, you can... were gonna have Magikarp do this? Yeah, be because Magikarp, that, Magikarp, that Magikarp can do this attraction, but it wastes way too much time. Oh well, that would've been funny. I mean, I could show you after the run, but... Uh, I don't know, that's not real. I don't think that's my call to make, and I don't know what we're on for time right now. Yeah, we're also a little bit behind because of the late start, so... But yeah, yeah I, so. Try, I tried to do it, but sadly wasted too much time. But you can have Magikarp flop right. around this course the entire time. We gotta so have... That just sounds funny. I can just imagine that. And he flops so. faster when you jump. It's kind of funny. That just sounds beautiful. Now, I don't understand this attraction at all, because sometimes I get 44 when I get every single booster, and I miss a couple of one, and I got a 43. So this attraction, I don't get how exactly it works in terms of speed. Probably, if you go out of your way too much, it probably isn't fast enough. Yeah, yeah it probably it's probably has to do with like taking turns on the inside of the turn and stuff like that. Okay, so we are now almost at the halfway point and we are going to enter the two most RNG heavy areas in the game. The cape and the volcano. But the good volcano. thing about that is that after the volcano there is no RNG in the run. Like, at all. Really? 
No RNG in a Pokemon game. Uh, I don't believe it. Yeah, because I don't need to befriend any Pokemon that roam, and everything is just on the way, on the, after the lava zone. Of course, the volcano is the most RNG heavy area in the game, so... Really? More than the beach? Yeah. Yes, very much. Why? What's, there is the, the, what makes it so ridiculous? I can waste 40 seconds if the game gives me something that I don't want, and there's nothing I can do for that. We'll see when we get there. Yeah. Hype. Oh, is it about like it dropping off like the machine dropping off like coal versus something else? Exactly, or that machine. Mm -hmm. If it gives me what I don't need, I waste 40 seconds in the spot. Okay, uh, I should be back. Is the stream back? Yeah, yeah the stream was good. Okay, yeah, I, I lost a little bit my connection to the internet. Hopefully it won't happen again. Okay, so I what I did there during the break is I upgraded my speed to levels. And that makes me a lot faster. Like, if I, if I remember correctly, the data is... In, we I checked it in the... So it's a considerably time save. And we get to the area. This area is one huge fetch quest. That's probably the best way to put it. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I was afraid I was gone. Well, no. Here. Oh, Mr. here God. Yeah, Mr. Mime. He uh, says, hey, you know, is, we are missing part of the rail, so maybe you should talk to Subat to see if you know anything about it. But I don't, uh, while Subat has a clue, we actually don't need to talk to Subat. We need to talk to yeah. Mawel. Now that we talk to Mawel, I need to go talk with Aaron. Because Aaron likes to eat iron, and the rails are made of iron. Oh, I hit three subats, four subats. That is good. So in this mine section, it's sort of like a who done it situation, where you're just trying to figure out where the rails went. That is correct. Now here, Aaron wants an iron ore, and he gave me a really bad RNG because he's really far away from the iron ore. Normally, he can be right beside it, so it's... And now he told me, hey, you know what? I saw Mawel munching on the rails. So let's go talk with Mawel, so that's what we're going to do. Now, a fun fact, 
I, in all my research data, I've never seen Mawel where he is right now. But on my last three attempts, Mawel has been here. So that the means last I... three attempts, Mawel's been there, but before then, never. Never. So I need to redo Weird. my data on Mawel. Which is a Weird. tough chase because of her horns. If they are snapping in your direction when you tackle in, you get knocked back. So you have to hit it where the horns aren't snapping on the other di on the other direction. Now I need to talk to Dogtrio to see where he hit the the rail. And Doctor says he put it on Marowak's berry storage. Okay, I, I need Golbat land, please land. Huh? Here it is. I need to befriend Golbat. So the whodunit thing goes from Aeron to Mawile to pretty much everyone eventually. Yeah, like we know Mawile was the one to chew it off now. And now we know that Doctor was the one to hit it, but we need to find, and he told us where to hit it, so we know we need to go there now. Now I need to hear a befriend Golbat because he, even though he's a little bit slow, it's still faster than the one Pokemon that I replaced with him. And also gives me berries. The other Pokemon doesn't give me berries. And berries are always a good thing in this run. Yeah, now I get Magnemite from that box so I can befriend it. There are three boxes with Magnemite. If I hit all three, I get Magneson, but Magneson is low. Now I need Cranidos. Now, a little fun thing can happen in here. There are a lot of crowded Pokemons, and if you time it right, you can use Thunderbolt on every single Pokemon in this area at the same time. It's, it looks kind of funny. That would be, yeah, that would be amazing to see there. I've, I've seen it happen a couple of times. Like, I hit Cranials with a Thunderbolt, and then all Pokemons keep walking into the Thunderbolt. Okay, now where are you, Magnemite? You should be I'm around here. I'm pretty sure it's because they can't just resist the sparkliness. Okay, Magnemite, where the hell are you? Is that... Where the hell is it? Yes. The problem with this area also is that everything blends into the background. Well, at least that's the at least that's the biggest problem with the area. And that all need I need three roaming Pokemon. This is probably oh, and my can they roam favorite. around the entire area or? Yep. Probably my least favorite area in the game. Now here I have I bait Marowak from afar so he can throw me his boomerang instead of doing bond rush because I gotta use my thunderbolt in end. It's a ground type. This game doesn't take into account type uh, super effective hits, but it does take into effect immunities. So if I if I find a, a ground type Pokemon, I cannot use my Thunderbolt. Interesting. Now I hit this box, which has a Diglett in it, and he tells me, hey, you know what? I put the rail beneath Snorlax. Now you're not going to get it. So we now have to find Snorlax and move him. Again, because we moved him at the very beginning of the run, too. Yep. Okay, I have... how many berries? I have 50... 60. So you didn't get a red berry at all this round. Oh. And I'm pretty sure the next one... the next one has a high chance of getting... It's probably one of the boxes with the highest chance of giving me a red one. But I don't leave it until this one, because there aren't many boxes after that one. So if I don't get anything before, I'm not going to be able to get the berries if I don't get a red in that one. So do you get exactly enough berries you need, or do you leave like 10 or 20 for wiggle room just in case? Or I get exactly what I need. I'm going at, at the penultimate area, I'm going to enter with only 
45 berries and I need 40 for the attraction. So I get an, exactly what I need. And of course by the end of the game I get uh, a lot of excess berries, but until the entrance of the last pen penultimate area I need to have exactly that. Because that is, before entering there I get my last upgrade. Now I need to take the rail to Mr. Mime and it's kind of far away. Now normally in a Pimbia temp, if I find a Pokemon that I want to get on my path here, I ignore it. But since we are in a marathon, I'm not going to ignore it. I'm going to just grab him and waste a couple of seconds. But it's better than look for them for minutes. I take take this rail all the way to Mr. Mime. Okay, Torchic is from is not on my path. Now I check this sign because it doesn't make me drop the the rail, and I'm going to need drifting in here. Now meows, I need to befriend him. Do you have a favorite Pokemon to befriend in this game, or Magikarp? Yeah. Magikarp. Magikarp has the extra charm that it speaks in a Shakespearean accent. Because yeah. why not? Yeah. I remember one of the when I first played this game, one of the Pokemon that I was really excited to see in the game was Porygon Z. Because I always thought the Porygon lineup was really cool. So when I saw Porygon Z in there, I was like, yo, this is awesome, let's go. Another awesome thing here is with a password, you can actually fight Groudon. And that is actually kind of fun to do it, because it's really hard. He has a crap ton of health, and he can bop you really, really bad. I, I remember putting in the password to get Celebi in the forest. That doesn't and work on the American me... version, as far as I know. It, yeah, but it took me like half an hour of trying Chase before I finally got him. <laughs> His Celebi is just really fast. Oh, oh yeah, I, I've never been able to, like, I put the password in my game and it doesn't appear. That's a shame. Okay, now they're going to give the rail to Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime is like, oh, you know what, the, the cart is also missing. The Gibbles took him, so let's go talk to the Gibbles. Now, the Gibbles here, I don't understand them because they are kind of like a, a tutorial for immunities in the game because they tell you that the Thunderbolt is not going to work on them. We think that Mar Marowak didn't, didn't do, and you have to fight Marowak before. And so it's fight like having a tutorial after the first level. Yeah, like I don't get why, and you cannot fight the Gibbles before that. You have to fight Marowak first. You're... Ouch. Now, there is an, a third attack that Pikachu can do, but I didn't learn it, which is Iron Tail, which is really strong, but it's not worth the time and berries to get it, because I barely do fights after you can get it. Like, you do more fights before it than after it. Okay, now so the I need... three attacks that Pikachu can learn overall are Thunderbolt, Tackle, and Iron Tail. Now I need to befriend a, a few Pokemons. Meowth I already got. I need Raichu, Dreamflame, Torchic, and Diglett. To befriend Dreamflame, I just talk to him. If you talk to Dreamflame a certain amount of times, you make him a friend. And if you talk to him as more times, you make him a best friend, and at which point he stops charging you for fly. There are two levels of friends in this game. First is a friend, which has a pink notebook in the name, and a best friend, which has a rainbow name on it. So is there any difference in regards to the speed run between a friend and a best friend, or...? No, not at all. 
But for to make most of them to make them your best friend, you have to talk to them like 20 times. Yeah. That is why in a 100% run we don't take into account best friends, only getting them registered on the on the path. That's good because that would be boring watching people just talk. And as Robert Ducky put in the chat, those are the two emotes that we are going to be using in the next area. The Troll Call and the Gold Nugget. Okay, now I need Torchic. Here it is. Really good cavern, with the exception of Magnamite Trolling. Oh yeah, because isn't one of the next mini games the uh, top one? No, th th that is after this one. Oh, okay. First, I need to do I the, that, one, and that one was a lot of fun. The bowling one. Yeah, but I'm going to be doing the top one with Pikachu, which is one of the worst Pokemon in the attraction. He's not the worst, but he's one of the worst. So that is going is that is a run killer, the top one. Now, if everything went according, I can enter this because I have exactly 50 friends. I'm going to use Pikachu. I only need to make 4,000 points, so I'm going to get them and then just fail the marathon to speed it up. The marathon, the mini game. What, right, how man. this mini game works is I just hit the ball into the doors, and I get a multiplier each time I hit the same door. First 200 points, there 400, then 800, etc. So I want to aim my, the ball to the same doors, which is easier said than done. Oh, I hit two at the same time, that's good. Oh, again. And now that I, and the reason I don't waste the two balls at the start is because after the, after a certain time, dog trees start to appear, and I hope one of them appears in the path of my ball so I can make him fail faster. Sadly, it didn't happen in this run. And now this was the sixth attraction, so the next one is technically the halfway point of the run. Yeah, but in reality, there's like four attractions all back to back near the end, isn't there? Yeah. There's like a bunch all at the end. Yeah, the time between attractions is start to get shorter at this point. Now I need to talk to Dogtrio to make him a friend. I try to favor the Pokemon that you only need to talk to them to make them your friends, with the exception of a couple ones that are way too out of the way. Uh, get in the cart, go to the lava zone, and welcome to the worst area in the game for a speedrun. Maybe for a speedrun, casually, Volcano is my favorite place. Yeah, it's a cool place, like, it looks really good, has good music, but damn, in a speedrun is annoying. And I'm I remember just... in particular the music there I loved. But it's just annoying because of the RNG furnace, essentially. See, or whatever the machine is called. Yeah, you see that drill? I need to get two Iron Ores out of that drill. There's a 96% I will get an Iron Ore. Yet, I've gotten way too many gold nuggets in runs. Like, I think every single marathon run I've done of this game, I've gotten at least one gold nugget. Let's see if we can break the tradition now. So essentially, this is the one speed run where you don't want gold. Okay, first, the drill needs cooldown, so we need to go check on the furnace, which is down here. And beat the crap out of that camera up. Because why not? <clears throat> Again, another ground type, so I cannot use Thunderbolt, so I have to take him down kind of slowly. Now, there's a fun thing you can do with camera. What? I've never seen him charge at me. 
that if you press left at the right frames, he completely does a, a 90 uh, degree turn like he did at the start of the fight. I don't know why that happens, but it's kind of funny when it does. Now that I'm friend of with camera up, I need to go back to the drill because now it's cooled down. But before I can use it, I need to fight Hitmontop. Which, by the way, even though I beat Hitmontop, that doesn't make Hitmontop my, my friend. And Hitmontop is one of the most annoying friends to make in 100%. I forgot why do you why is it what do you have to do to befriend him? You need to give him a gold top. Right, that was it. So you need to get a gold nugget and then make him a top. Oh that was a really good fight. For this fight I he moved on me so fast that I actually have to jump back to be able to hit it with a thunderbolt the second time. <laughs> and now let's pray to the Iron Jesus and see what we get from the drill. E and what? Uh, ah, can you please spam gold nugget please in the chat? Oh my god. There goes 40 seconds. I remind you, this has a 4% chance of appearing. Nah, <laughs> the gold nuggets. And I need two iron ores. Now I need to take this iron ore to the furnace. Now it's faster to just go take one and then hit the drill a second time when I come back because it's still cooling down while I go past it walking with this. Now here comes the troll set. calls. The troll calls are, are trolls because if oh, they see me, my. they are going to want to tackle me and that wastes time. So I need to be careful to not get into their eyesight. That is why I have two emotes for this particular area in my chat. So I have to take this iron ore to the furnace, then come back, then take another iron ore to the furnace without triggering the torquals. And there is an invisible wall that forces me to get close to them, by the way. Is there really? That's yeah. funny. Like, no, you can't just get around this difficulty. Now this first, I don't know, I'm going to take it into a lever, so I can hit the switch that is next to me. And the second one I get, I'm going to turn it into a top, so I can enter the next attraction. First trigger the cutscene. And then I get the lever. Grab it, Pikachu, thank you. What other Pokemon do you need to be friend in the volcano once you I need get Golem the, uh, top. I need Golem, which I'm going to talk right here. And I only to befriend him I only need to talk to him. And I need Ponita. Ponita I need they don't. because I need to so you can so the one in the in the plaza can give me double dash which is a, a lot faster than dash level 2 the rest of the pokemon in here i don't need them like i have most of the pokemon that i need that are not uh, story based did you just befriend golem by giving him berries no just by talking to him he says that if, if oh. you have an ore you can you can sell it to him for berries oh nice you would have thought that a 
Golem being a classic strong Pokemon, you would fight him or something, not just talk and, hey, yeah, I'll be for your friend. Okay, Troll Cults Part 2, let's see if they behave. Hopefully they Please. will. I don't see anyone close, but that one in the middle is walking toward the right. I don't like it. Well, let's just hope, right? Okay, I made it. Wait. We only lost time thanks to the gold nugget, not to the troll calls. Because now in your world record, did you get no gold or? Not, I. It was no gold, no troll calls. Like it was essentially have, a really good. Yeah, run. my my first 227 run had really good. Like I played really well, but had terrible RNG. Yeah. My current one, I played mm, more or less. It wasn't that good, but it wasn't bad. But I had amazing but you had RNG. Amazing RNG. So I, I, I want to get a run that I play well and get good RNG. My goal... So if you had a run... My primary goal... If you had goal, a run that... Yeah? If you had a run where you did play well and you did have good RNG, like, what time do you think you could get with this game? Well, my sum of best will give me a 30 call 2.23 in-game time, but I'm happy with a 2.25. That would mean beating my current PV in real time for a minute and 15 seconds. The goal really is sub 225. Yeah, I guess that would be like, I'm not playing the game again. If I <laughs> get 225, 25 on, on the shelf, I'm never touching it again. Yeah, 225, I may still come back to it. Now this is the hardest mini game of them all, Beyblade. Because Pikachu is really light and I can get tossed around a lot and I need to make 5,000 points. Yeah, oh, I'm getting so... And you control this by tilting the Wiimote. So if you tilt in left, you move to the left, to tilt it up, to the, to, to, to the front, etc. Okay, I already well, got the points. Well, at least when they made Poké Park, they really tailored towards the Wii's specialties, I guess you could say. Like, the controls Where... are not bad, but it makes, it becomes awkward in a certain point. Like, the final boss is, you're <laughs> fighting the controls in the final boss. Are you fighting view more, or are you fighting girls more? Okay, that was easy. Now we get an, the seventh prison piece. And now we can go talk to Blaziken, which is the area keeper. Also one of the best starters in general. At least in my opinion. Yeah, it's one of the best. That is why it's an Uber. So we first we need to beat a couple of Pokemon. The first one is Charmander on the path. And Charmander is a scrub, because we'll be fighting Pokemon with 3 life bar for a while. But Charmander only has 2. So, he goes flying. And again. Now after this, so he's Meditite, which is a quiz. So is Charmander the only person of the three, like, original friends because you had where you actually have to do, like, an event to befriend him? Yes. Well, he's, also, he's already your friend, but you have to actually fight him for the story progresses. Oh, okay. Because, like, Pipla, Pipla's just like, yeah, hi, we're, we're already friends, so... Yeah. Same with Chikorita, right? Uh, I, I misread that question. Damn it. Chikorita and Piplup are basically already your friend. You don't have to like fight them or do chase or anything like that, right? Yeah. 
Okay, first question, who is the attraction chief? Place you can? No, in Cavern, Bastion. Who doesn't take damage from Thunderbolt? Is Kibble. Because he has two those questions, who hit who doesn't and who ha who, who does take? Let's read that. Alright, so because I saw a comment in the chat really quickly, I'm just gonna say that because someone was asking who I was, I believe. So I'm Rob the Gamer one one seven. If you didn't know that, I don't usually be. I watch a lot of Pokemon speedruns, but I don't live stream a lot of them. Okay, now this is Ponita. Ponita is a kind of a pain in the ass to beat because I need to play chase with it, and it leads an Ember Trace behind, so I cannot. Chase it directly. I have to go kind of on a, on a, on a side. Also, it's lower if if Ponita runs to the left instead of the right. Okay, this is the last box that I'm going to break in the game. Oh, it didn't give me a red one. Nice. Well, it did not? Up. No, I didn't, I didn't need a red one, but that one almost always gives me a red one. So, of course it didn't. So, um, we're going red barrierless. Yeah. So, what are the odds of having a run with zero red barriers like that? It's actually quite high. That is what I don't take my chances with that box. But, for example, at my, at my current level in the game, I don't take runs that I don't get two red berries at the start. Like, if I get I get one green berry at the start, reset. Also, if anyone wants to start running this game, I don't recommend this route. Because oh, I thought you were about to say I don't recommend this game. I was like, okay then. No, I don't recommend this route because it's hard to finish a run with a good time if you don't know what you're doing at first. Uh, what I recommend is instead of getting Golbat and and Gasly that I'm going to get in this run, you get Butterfree and Spinarak. That changes a lot and you, all, you, don't, you need 110 berries instead of 70. But that makes the game a lot more easy to com to complete in a good time. So it makes it easier, but it sacrifices you a sacrifice little bit of time because like, you need berries. You sacrifice like a minute at most. But it does help to finish runs. I see, so it's almost like if you want to do a run... And you can get 227 with that route, like my first 227 was with that route. Oh. Alright, so even still, like, you still have a chance of tying world record with that. With that other vert. Okay, now I have to fight Charmander again, but this time he gained a lot of health, but he's still as easy. Is this the first battle that you do with an enemy with four, four bar, bars of health? And uh, no. I think not. I don't believe oh, I saw it. Might be, it might be the first one. But... It might be the first one. No, I think Freddy Gator also has four. Maybe I'm not sure. Okay, I need so I need to hear the game for this one, for this mini game. Yeah. Because I need to hear the boulders that are tossing me, and I flick the women to get to to hit it, hit them. Okay, I'll be quiet. But he got that. It was really bad. But I got it. Well, at least you got it. Yeah, I only needed 6,000 and got 23. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, 
after you get past 6,000, really makes no difference. Yeah, right? you need to get at least a couple 300s. Like, if you get only 100s, you're not going to make it. And if I fail one, I miss two boulders because I need to get stunned. So that is the hard part to actually hit all of the stones. Okay, now the RNG is over. Yay! So at this point, it's pretty much just execution. Yeah, it's all execution. I mean, there's a Pokemon that is kind of RNG because yeah, I cannot, I can get it in one of two spots, but is the same. I waste the same time getting it on any of the spots. So if I get it in spot A or in spot B, it doesn't matter. How do you? But do you know? Do you know which spot it's gonna be at? Or like, yeah. would you go to spot A and then waste time because you thought it was at spot A? A spot A is on my path, and spot B is a fixed spot in my in my path. Oh, so they're both places in the pathway that you would go. Yeah. I see. So it's just a matter of where do I stop. Now, even though this seemed like a long path, it's actually the shortest path to get to Dribbling. I, I timed this path a lot. It is really fast. Okay, now I go. Now I go back to the hub area, the meeting place, and I'm going to talk to Ponita again. This time I'm going to be learning double dash. Double dash is a technique when if you use your dash almost at the same time the first one runs out, you get an extra boost on speed. So I'm going to try to do it all the time. It's not that easy. Especially because since I have mumble out, uh, team speak audio, my game audio is a little bit low, so I don't hear perfect perfectly everything, and that is, I use sound cues for that. But it won't waste that much time if I don't get it. Like I save a second every like every four so double dashes or so. So now here they're talking that the, the, the Escape Pavilion, which is a, an island that's floating about po above Poké Park, is going to fall. And Miss Rebus heard and said, hey, you know what, Miss Magus knows something about it. So why don't you go talk to Miss Magus? Now here point attention is Double Dash. So we can now put, we now know how to play Mario Kart. <laughs> Mario Kart's always fun. And now I need, first I need to go to this tree, which is almost impossible to move fast in this tree. And I need to befriend Mime Junior and Burmy. For Mime Junior, it's fastest to select the first option than to cancel the text, he, the options he gives you. But for Burmy, it's fastest to cancel than to select any option. And Burmy is small. Now, I forgot to mention, but all Pokemons are correctly sized in this game, with the exception of two Pokemon. The first was Macargo. Oh crap, I selected the first one. And the second one is Rayquaza. Those two are really, really off in terms of size. <laughs> Macargo is way too big and Rayquaza is way too small. But everything but else other... is exactly is how it should be. Every other Pokemon is pretty much to scale of what they claim it to be. Yeah. Like in the second one you can see Joltik and it's barely a mess of pixels on the screen because it's so small. Oh yeah, isn't Joltik just sort of on another Pokemon? Yeah, you can see it on the back of a couple of Pokemons. Just healing. I remember, because it's sort of like, find Joltek, and it took me like 15 minutes for me to realize he was on the back of someone. 
So, what's your opinion of the haunted zone? I think that's like my second favorite area in the game after the volcano. It's a really cool area. Sadly, it's probably the area we spent the least, the least time on it. Because, for example, here in the outside parts, I don't need to befriend anything. I just come here, do the attraction, and enter the house. So, outside, you befriend nothing? Not nothing. That's a shame, because there are some good Pokemon out there. Yeah, Glee Haunch score. Haunch out there. Glee, Glee score. Glee score. Now, if I do this right, it's going to look pretty sick, but it's hard to do it right, so hopefully I can get. Alright, well, now you got me paying attention. Do this done right. If I do it right, I shouldn't be able to clear this attraction in 6 seconds. You should be able to complete it in 6. Yeah. Ah, uh, really slow, 8 seconds. Well, 9. My best time is 5.86. And the game expects you to take at least 20 seconds to clear it. Wow. It I mean, a... you said that 6 seconds is fast, but even what you just got looked amazing. I was like, wow. Yeah, it, uh, there's a trick, like, if you... Uh, press B on the correct uh, spot on the drop you jump ex just exactly what you need to reach the next one and if you do it correctly like right you goes like a bullet across all the drops now we need to talk to Drivlum, Drivlum to enter the castle the mansion I mean And just like that, just see how long it was between Rhyferior's, Blaziken, and Tangrowth's attraction. Like, they're still to pile them up with, together. Yeah, at this point, it's sort of like... Uh, attraction after attraction after attraction. Now, here, Duskull will, give, will take us through a tour of Dimension. We need to follow him. In this place, I'm going to be befriending Dribblon, Dazzly, Metapod, and Kakuna, and Abra. I forgot Metapod and Kakuna were in this area. Oh, they are, but they are going to be the last thing I do in this area. <coughs> now Dazzly is going to appear behind me. I follow him. When you see like a circle around Pikachu and when I start dashing, that's when I get um, a double dash. Now he's going to open the blue jewel doors. Jewel doors. Also, if someone is wondering, yes, I'm not American, I'm actually Mexican. That's why I have this accent. I assumed that because you also mentioned earlier that you couldn't get Celebi because you think it's only an American thing. Well, technically we do the same, we have the same region. Well, I have to explain this Gasly. Now, this Gasly I didn't have in the road because if you chase it normally, it's really long chase. But. Dotum once told me, hey, why don't you get Gasly? He's really fast. And I'm like, wait, no, he isn't. He's really slow. And then he showed me that you can get it immediately after talking to him. And I was like, what? So that is what game took me to rewrite the entire route. Thanks What'd you do? You, what'd you do? You dash, jump, and iron tail? No, just jump and you hit him. Dash, jump, and you hit him. Every single time. Wow. That's, uh, that's pretty convenient. Like, there is no no way to fail. Every single time you do that, you hit, you hit him. Now, here is the Dosnor attraction. If I pick Gasly, he can go through all the obstacles, but even then, Cranios is faster to do. 
in a previous draft of route I had Gengar in this traction, but getting Gengar is slow. Who do you use for the attraction? Cranidos. Cranidos, okay. Now, what number of traction is this now? It's like eight or nine at this point, right? Yeah, it's the ninth. Nine? Okay. No, wait. This is the tenth. Yeah, it's the tenth. This attraction has always boggled my mind. It's pretty much run in a straight line and slam your head into boulders? Boulders and spinner racks. Now, the position of the boulders and spinner racks are random, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the speed or the time at all. Okay, now that I beat that, I can enter the hall. So let's go talk to this. Tusko. And the ghost Pokemon can go through the... The, all the obstacles, like they don't smash them, they just turn in, uh, intangible. Right, I remember that. I think you used Ghastly to beat up. Now all the ghost Pokemon here are playing with Ghastly, with Pichu I mean. And now we need to talk to with Miss Ribos. Miss Ribos says, hey, you know what, uh, we're having a party but the piano is broken. Maybe you need to go talk to Spinarak to get Thread so we can fix it. So that is what we are going to do. And this is a part of the game where I say, what the hell were you thinking, developers? And you're going to see why. Spinarak is... See all the stuff, I'm, all the, the distance I'm dashing through. And enter the green jewel doors. And in here there's Abra, I only need to talk to him. And he's my friend. I remember Abra's cry was one of them that I thought was really funny in this game. Abra! Now talk to Spinarak, and Spinarak is going to give me uh, some thread. And now we have to carry it all the way back to the hall. This is the longest walking section in the entire game. That just sounds like fun. <clears throat> yeah, that is what I say. What the hell were you thinking, developers, when you made this section? There are no shortcuts. There is no way to speed Pikachu up. We just need to take this thread. Thankfully, they learn because in the sec in the sequel, with Pikachu, if you grab something, you can walk with it and you can throw stuff ahead of you. And if you have Tepic, Tepic moves at normal speed when carrying stuff. So they at least fix this problem in the sequel. That's good. So now walking, speed walking all the way to the piano. Now on the, on the first visit to the hall is faster to take the right path because you trigger the cutscene fastest. The, the trigger for the cutscene is close to the door on the right side that is on the left side. But for this, the piano is on the left side, so I take a different path. Those are just small details that I keep encountering when, when routing this game. Like, the triggers are not on a fixed shape, like, of the same shape as all of them. Oh, I... Let's see... Now, our quest took us to speak with Miss Magus, right? That's what we came here for. Well, actually, right. we don't need to speak to Miss Magus yet, and the game doesn't tell you that. We need to find Rotom first. Yeah. 
Right, because Rotom is hiding somewhere in the mansion. Yeah, and if you talk to Miss Magus, she's like, okay, you can go find Rotom first. And now we hear come here and say she's is missing a book. Where can we find that book? I don't know. Oh, here it is. Okay, quiz time. These are actually kind of. Here comes question one. Uh, the piano. Dosnor and Voldorf. Black. The one of the Pokemon that can play the attraction is really tricky because it has like 12 different answers. The rest of the questions have a set answers. That one actually has more than three. Now, this book is the key to the bookcase and has a picture of a key. How convenient. <laughs> the book that unlocks the bookcase has a key on it. Now, this attraction is also another run killer. The Rotom attraction. So when you were saying earlier that there were two attractions that were really hard, you were talking about the one right. on the tops and then Rotom's? Yep, that's what the two, the two I was talking about. Okay. Because we're going to be playing Link's Crossbow Training. And I'm, going to be using, uh -huh, and I'm going to be using one of the worst Pokemon in the minigame. Which is... Crap, I didn't switch to Abra. Oh, this is bad. Let's see if I can make it. I need to make 5,000 points. Other challenge. Well, hopefully you can pull it off. The difference is with Abra I need to do two hits on the Hunters and with Pikachu I need three. I think I need four for the Rotoms. Okay. I need 5,000 points. Okay, good. It was really good. That's good news. I also done some uh, for fun runs where I do a Pikachu only. That means that I use the passwords and I can only use Pikachu in attractions. And some of them are actually quite hard with Pikachu. This one being one of them. Now only three attractions remain. We are getting close to the end of the run. Slowly but certainly. <laughs> uh, Pikachu, please. Now, after exiting here, we finally talk with Miss Magius. And Miss Magius told us how to get to the. that we need. Um, shaming. Health to get to the Sky Pavilion and Shaman is in the Granite Zone. So at this point, we're trying to figure out how to get up to the Sky Pavilion because Mew's asking for us to return the 14 Sky Pillars. Uh, okay, here's the Pokemon that I was saying that it doesn't. is Dribblum. Like Dribblum, I can get it here. But I can get it at the gate of the hubs. It, it it doesn't matter which on where I get it. And it's the last piece of RNG. It's just a matter of where do I stop. Now in the previous route, like I said, we need to get Spinarak. So after this, we go back to where Spinarak is and talk to him. Well, but now we don't have to. That's correct. Now we leave the mansion and I'm still missing Metapod and Kakuna. So, right. it's time to get them. In this tree right here, it's Kakuna. They only appear after you clear Rotom's attraction. 
So how are you supposed to get them, find them in your normal playthroughs? I don't know. And in the other I think I ended up the... looking up a walkthrough to find those ones because just like, well, why would you ram those trees in particular? And why would you do it after getting Rodom and not before entering the mansion? Exactly. Now here is faster to just run to the meeting place than tweaking the drift limb. Only area in the game with, when we don't hit the drift limb at all. In every single, in every other area we use drift limb at least once. In this one we don't. After every single area we clear, the treehouse keeps getting bigger. Which is important to plot eventually. Okay, now I should have enough berries to upgrade my dash to level 3 and I'm going to get 35... Oh, I think I'm missing 10 berries. Oh crap, I think I'm missing 3 berries. 10 berries. No big deal. you got all of them that you needed. Yeah, I might have miscounted. Oh, now, that's not bad. Yeah, it does, it does, it wastes a couple of seconds to get an extra one. Oh god, okay. well, that's not too bad. Now I have dash level 3. And at, that, at this speed, it's the same to get a double dash than just spamming dash. So I will not be doing double dash anymore. And then, you may wonder then why you get double dash. Well, I get double dash because you need to get double dash in order to get dash level 3. That is the only reason I get it. Because it's not possible to get dash level 3 if you don't get double dash first. I, don't know. I think it's 35 what I need. It should be 35, like I don't think I miscounted. Well, hopefully it didn't. No, like I said, I already have most of the friends that I need. Like, from this point out, there's only one Pokemon that is not required by the plot that I'm going to get. Every other Pokemon that I get after this, with the exception of that one, is going to be required for the plot. And what's the one that you get that's not required? Skorupi. Skorupi, okay. Because you, need to only, you only need to talk to him. I'm going to get... No, let's see if I'm not short. And like, I just did Rotom's Attraction and here is Absol's. Yeah, I, I was 10 very short, I miscounted the boxes I got. Good thing there are two jars with berries there. Yeah, because that would stink if you really had to go, like, back to, like, I don't know, the beach zone or something to get berries. I will have to befriend Charizard. That would be the other faster thing to do. What would be the other faster thing? Now, here in this attraction, you can actually get a little boost of speed if you jump on the dog trios. But the game with with Ponyta and specifically, if you do that, you always land in a barrier. With other Pokemon you can get the boost, but with Ponyta you can't. So you have to have to jump over them. And now we're only missing two prison pieces. Now the next attraction is one I know that many casual players had trouble with, the next the next two one. And they're actually quite easy, like I can do them both with my eyes uh, with a blindfold. 
But you can't do the quizzes blindfolded. Yeah, but I cannot do the quizzes. <laughs> like, and the, and as, you, as you see in this run, when, there are a lot of quizzes. When you first said that, I actually thought you were joking around, saying, oh, the one thing that seems like it would be easy to do blindfolded, I can't do. But after explaining it over, if it's all randomized like that, the questions and the answers, it's like, well, yeah, it's just guessing at that point. Yeah, and like when I did my playthrough, I, I got stuck for like three hours on the course of the quiz well, before calling it quits because of that. And there's no way to just avoid all of the quizzes in the game. There are a lot of that, that are required by the plot. Okay, now it's like to Flygon. Flygon says if we want to cross this door, we need to get three three passwords. So let's go get those passwords. I will get them from Polygon C, Togekiss, and Snorlax. First. We need to fight plastics. Now, having dash level 3 has another nice bonus, and that is that my tackle power is now stronger. So I no longer need to do bolt tackle to, the, to do that damage. I can just simply dash. So bolt tackle or bolt, bolt cancelling is no longer useful. Upgrading the Thunderbolt doesn't increase the strength, only increases the reach of the, of the Thunderbolt. And upgrading Iron Tail makes it really broken, but as I said before, it wastes too much time to get. And berries, which is the most important. Now here is Korupi. I cannot befriend it yet, so I'm not going to talk to it. Now in here, there is a potential sequence break that I was able to make once in practice. But I haven't been able to replicate it. After all these platforms and the switch, you can barely make it to the other side and that will skip all the password sequence. Sadly, oh. I only, I've only been able to do it once in practice and haven't been able to replicate it. Because there is a invisible wall in here. I don't know how the hell I got around it. If you could figure out what caused it, how much time would that save? Like... About two minutes, maybe three. Wow. So, if you figure out, you really want to figure out, really, what caused that. Did you get it on video at all, or...? No, I was doing some uh, practice, and I was... I normally record, record, uh, uh, record all my practice, but I ran out of uh, hard drive space that one time, so I didn't feel like erasing stuff. And didn't, didn't start recording. Of course, that's the one time where something amazing happens. What are you going to see? Uh, Lapuni. And I don't know. The first password is love. That's a nice password. Now we need to go get the second one, which is the first of the final bosses, getting the second password. <laughs> well, in this game, what do you really consider a boss? Because... Platforming? Oh. Platforming is a boss? And Just a platforming. One. Now, the, I'm going to have to fight an Electivire right here, and this fight, if you see any video of mine, is always exactly the same. Like, it's always got the same. I start the fight, tackle him, that's to the left, and he uses Swift, I tackle again, that's to the left, tackle. It's always exactly the same. He always ends up in the same spot. Like this fight is exactly the same every single time. It's the only fight that is like that in the entire game.
Now here I, I check this thing to use the rope card and reach Togekis. And we reach one of the first obstacle in the runs, like real obstacles, which is Togekis's platforms. <laughs> I am Mexican. Huh? No, I see in the chat that they say that I'm, that I'm a Spaniard. No, I'm Mexican. Oh, okay. I, that just came out of the blue. I was like, what did I say? I didn't realize you were also keeping an eye on chat. I'm pretty most of the run I didn't, but I, I took the chance in that cutscene to look at the chat. I didn't realize there was... I saw them talking about Spanish and Portuguese, but I didn't realize they were talking about you, necessarily. Okay, that went really well. I managed to skip a couple of, of platforms. Now I get the second password, which is peace. Love and peace. What got, what do you think is the third password? Sorrow. I don't know. If I, if I thought about it, I could probably figure it out, but... Joy? Okay, I talked to Scroopy, I don't remember. Let's check again. Okay, mm -hmm. Dito. I, I, well, I didn't remember if I talked to Scroopy, so I wanted to check. Yeah, you talked to Scroopy, I remember. Okay, now I need to go back and actually take Drivling to the cavern so I can talk to Snorlax. Now, I forgot to mention the limits of friends. Like, for Garados, you need 25. For Bastion, no, for... Yeah, Bastion, you need 50. For Rotom, you need 65. And for Salamence, which is the one you need next, you need 80 friends. 80? Yeah. Uh, and that's how many you need overall on the run, really, right? Yeah, everything else is just a bonus after that. 80 is the one I need. And I, when I talk to Salamence, I'm going to have exactly 80 friends. It's a well, really fun didn't... Wii game. Like, I won't say it's a really good game, but it's a really fun game. I would honestly say that I had a lot of oh, I had a lot of fun playing the Poké Park Wii series. That, it I mean, really is a lot of fun to play. It's very different than everything else, which is really good. Okay, third password was Rainbow. Rainbow, interesting. Yeah, uh... And, and Poké and, Park 2 uh, is actually quite challenging, like, it has a tournament mo at the end that is actually quite hi uh, hard. And I, I like how one of the first Pokémon you meet in this game, Snorlax, ends up being one of the last Pokémon you befriend and has the password for the very end of the game. Yeah, he was the third Pokémon we met in Poké Park. Something like that, Chata, then Baneri, then Snorlax. Yep. That's like, oh, wow, everything's well, come full circle. I didn't count Mew because you get it, you, you kind of met in a dream when you're getting to Poké Park. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you could count Mew, but you sort of met him in the dream, so I would count Pete Pokémon you physically met. Now, in case I were to miss a Pokemon, the best bet I have right here is Staraptor as a backup. But I was going to say, so if you missed a friend, would do you have a backup that you would get and it would be Staraptor? Yeah, Staraptor is the best one. Alright. Okay, now, this attraction is actually kind of hard for casual players on the first try. But they give you one of the best Pokemons you can do this attraction with in Togekiss. Basically you have to fly and hit the targets. I need to make 13,000 points. And how many do you think you'll get? Like About 16,000. 16, like this is actually kind of tight. This is not that I'm going to have a huge leeway. Like, with the only Pokémon you can get a leeway is with Latios. So, the blue targets are worth 100 and the reds are worth 300? Yeah, and the gold one's 1,000. 
So you definitely want to hit the gold ones as much as you can. Yep. 16,500. Now, I don't. I suppose this wouldn't be considered a speed run, really, but do you also keep track of like high scores in some of these mini games? In some of them, like I remember them because of how good they were. Like this, with the best I've done is like twenty thousand, and the, the Pikachu at the first is, I've done that way too many times that I remember every single time I get. And I had a list of scores right there, but I forgot that I lost that spreadsheet, so and I didn't care to make a new one. <laughs> because some of the best times I've done, I got and has been on runs, and I just forget, I erase those files. Now you're up to, you're just missing one sky present piece now at this point, right? Yeah, that is correct, and it's right here in the garden area. And they keep giving you friends that you don't need. <laughs> also, most of the friends that you get for free cannot compete in any attraction. Only a couple of them can. So it's like, great, I'm glad I'm not your friend, even though I did nothing for you, and you can do nothing for me. And like, for example, Magic Up, even though it's a water Pokemon, cannot compete in the, in the swimming minigame, because, well, it's Magic Carp. So wait, Magikarp can't participate in the swimming mini game, but he can participate in an ice slide. That is great. And he can also compete in the Venusaur swing. <laughs> What's he grabbing on with his fence? His mouth. Oh, interesting. Lover fish. Now uh, here I need to talk to Shamin. And Shamin says that to cover Iquasa we need a mirror. Marip knows where the mirror is, but we actually don't need to talk to Marip. So let's go take the drift lane. So I remember when I first played this game, this was one of the first encounters that, as gamers, we really had with Shaman. I don't think the Shaman event was a thing at that point. Probably not. That's yeah, like, so. wow. So I was like, oh my goodness, this is Shaman. So we come here looking for the mirror that fell in the meeting plaza. <laughs> and it fell on top of the tree in the middle. Luckily for you, for us, they have been building the tree house so we can reach where the mirror is. Convenience. How convenient. Now this place, I've said it before, is impossible to do fast. The camera angles are way too, way bad, way, really bad. But, like then, then change like that. And here's the mirror. So we take it to Rayquaza and I would like to point out that Pikachu is carrying a mirror and there is no reflection of Pikachu in the mirror. Are sure it's not just a window? No, it's a mirror. Mirror, mirror, in the pause. Pikachu confirmed vampire? What makes Pikachu a vampire? Oh, right, because he can't see himself in the, in the mirror. I get it now. I'm a little behind on my vampire lore. So we take it to the dais here, and we get Rayquaza, which has one of the cries that I like and I hate the most at the same time. I remember seeing Rayquaza up here. I was like, okay, all logic thrown out the window. Here's just Rayquaza for the hell of it. This is just completely unexpected. I and mean, at this small. point, the only legendaries you've seen are Shaman, who just appeared. And Rotom, if you count Rotom as a legendary, because that is a little disputed. I mean, yeah, obviously, you know, Mew's in the game, but Rayquaza appearing is just completely random. Now, here is also more logic goes to waste, because I'm going to be picking Rhyperior instead of Absol, 
because Rhyperior is faster than Absorb. Even though Absol's on four legs, where Rhyperior is on two. And it's a huge boulder thingy. Now, the points I get on the first phase almost doesn't matter, because with the points I make in the second phase, I'm going to be able to clear it. So I'm just going to try to get the most I can, but it doesn't really matter. And it's the same values as the previous minigames. Yellow for 100, red for 300, and rainbow for 1000. Now, I really have all the points that I need. Most of them. That's good. I hit, need to hit the targets. I need to... The ones so once you're I... done with it... So once you're done with this minigame, it's just pretty much Mew and then it's over, right? That, yeah. With the Oxys, it's actually possible to hit every single target. It's the only Pokemon when you can, where you can do it. Nah. Like, RTA viable, or...? Like, it's not possible, like, some targets he appear on different, uh, at the same time, and it's not possible to hit two of the two of them at the same time, but the Oxy's target, uh, Radical is covers, like, a quarter, of the, a quarter of the screen, so you can hit almost every target without any problems. I see. Now we have all the prison pieces. Yay! Now let's go see Mew and rescue the Sky Pavilion! And we are friends with Rayquaza. Because that is cool. Yo, any game that you befriend a Pokemon like Rayquaza is good in my books. Now I need to talk to Shaman, and Shaman says we need to make the Glacidia grow, so we need the water you can. And to get a water you can, we need to talk to Bellasan, which is, where are you? Here it is. Unnecessary fetch quest is unnecessary. And now we make the Glacidia grow. Blossom just happens to have this magical watering can on her. And now this is probably the first look everyone had at Skyform Shaming. Oh, a lot of people had. Well, at least probably the first look uh, in an official Nintendo game. Yeah, because I think the movie came out first than like this. And I know for a fact that the Shaming event was really late into the Pokemon Platinum Live. Yeah, I was pretty late. So I'm, my guess is that it came out after this game. And now we reach the Sky Pavilion. So after all of this, we finally made it, guys. We finally made it to the Sky Pavilion. And this cutscene was pro. This cut yeah. scene is probably amazing too, honestly. Like it's, they are really well made. Like I will say, Pocket Part One and Two are two of the most beautiful looking games on the Wii. Oh, they are very beautiful. They, yeah, honestly, they probably are the most beautiful games I owned on the Wii. Like the models are really good. For once, they didn't use the stadium models. They use in every <laughs> other 3D game. You can really tell that they put a lot of work into the games because they're practically perfect, aside from some weird logic, but... Logic aside, the games came out very, very beautifully. That's a word. Now I need to come here. Talk to Piplop. 
And nos dice que he tells us that he haven't seen Mew around. So let's go look for Mew. Let's go back to the balloon and talk to Piplop again. We talk to Piplop, then we talk Piplop. And he says that he's always been on the balloon. So let's go back to Piplop. Now that platforming I do in the bridge is way harder than it looks because of this game. <laughs> and now he reveals himself as Mew. Mew, Mew, Mew. I also have an emote for that. <laughs> my friend faces. Mew, Mew, Mew. A lot of people in my chat complains that they changed Mew's voice from Pokemon Snap. And while I love the Pokemon Snap voice, I also like this one. And here comes, this is the actual final boss of the game. The first part of Mew. The platforms. Nah. These are really hard. The platforms are really the boss in this game. I need to remind you that I'm playing with a Wii mode sideways. I'm going to be using a D-pad to do some 3D platforming. Yeah, you can do it. I'm going to try once for the fastest strats, if not going to for safety. So what? at what point would RTA time end on this? On the last Xbox after I beat all three, uh, all three phases of Mew. On the like last I'm Xbox, okay. Yeah, I'm going to beat first this, then this the battles, then the chase. After the chase, there are a couple of text boxes, and then the last one. I will tell you okay. when. It always threw me for a surprise also when I first played this game when Mew transformed into Magmortar. It's like, okay, this is interesting. Yeah, and now the second one is the actually that is kind of hard. Like the first one cannot hit me at all if I do the same thing. Now Garchomp can actually hit me because he does Dragon Rush. <laughs> so I have to dodge that Dragon Rush a couple of times. He hit me twice, I'm dead. So I'm going to take it safe and actually move away from him instead of just dodging. And now the last transformation of you, Peter. I have to wait a little bit when uh, before dashing to the left because if I do it too soon, he does uh, an earthquake instead of a uh, dark pulse. That should be to... really bad. Yeah, because he will hit me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and getting now hit just... probably isn't fast. Now I just need to catch Mew, and like I said, if you don't upgrade your speed at all, it's practically impossible to catch Mew here, unless. He... Mew get stuck in somewhere. Yeah. Can that happen? Can Mew actually get stuck? He can get slowed down. Oh. Okay, I'm going to tell you when to... Timing is soon. Oh, I need to talk to, to Mew again. And... Time. Alright, uh, I think I stopped time a little bit early, but it would probably be about a 2.28.38 roughly. Because mm. it, because you had to stop to fix the stream at one point, I didn't stop the timer, so. Uh, it sounds like about right for a marathon run and considering everything I had, 
This should be, yeah. in theory, in in-game time, 2.32, which was my goal. Not get over 2.32 in-game time. Mm -hmm. uh, this cutscene takes about 3 minutes, so I can see the game times. So I don't know if it's time for that, or we need to switch. Uh, I'm not fully sure. I think because estimate was 2.40, I think we can watch the cutscene, but... I don't know. If the bombs do comes in here and says otherwise, then hey, so I don't know, but I like... see no problem really in viewing the cutscene for a little bit. Yeah, it's just like three minutes, and then I say prompt appears, and save the game, reset, and I see my in-game time. And you can't just skip this cutscene. No, yeah, you have to watch it. Good thing so, that this, this game after have... repeating the run, you have three minutes where you're like, okay, did I get world record? That happened on, the, on my last run that I got to 27, like, I was like, holy crap, this run was so good, I'm pretty sure I got 226. And I was all these three minutes like, did I get it? Did I get it? Only to for save like, and check and... For like three minutes, you're just like, did I do it? Did I do it? And nope. I'm sorry, that would just terrify me. And then I just check my, my notes and yeah, I'm like 15 seconds away of an in-game time PB. My current RTA Just, PB is oh, 223 something. Oh well. Yeah, because the in-game time adds uh, like 3 minutes, but it's consistent, like it always adds the same amount of time. That's good. And it allows for like, I don't exactly know how the loading between regions are, happens, like I know NTSC, U and Paul is the same in terms of loading times and in-game timer. I don't know Japanese or the Wii U version that just was released just released on Europe. Like I'm waiting for it to be released on the States to to get the Wii U version. And if anything it will be faster to RTA which will make be make me able to do more runs. Yeah, well overall it seems like a pretty solid run. I mean Getting within four or five minutes of world record, I mean, you can't really argue with that. Yeah, Magnemite. For a marathon run. Magnemite when. was uh, slow. What else, what else got went wrong? I got a gold nugget. And I don't think I... 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 I failed you one missed twist. ten berries. You missed ten Yeah, it wasn't berries, that big but... of a... That, that, not that many mistakes. I got no, platform really section good. first try, which was really good. Yeah, you got the platforming first try, you didn't forget any friends. So you had pretty good Staravia luck. Yeah, Staravia was really good. Yeah, so you can't really argue with that, all that. Um, it does run on Dolphin, now, uh, but I, I haven't actually tested how accurate it is, because I can't. My computer barely runs Dolphin. Uh, so are you going to see what in-game time is real quick, or...? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I already saved, I'm breathing to check the in-game time. Okay, I think we should 231. Get with 231, nice. Ah, uh, what was that, the bomb, Stu? You ready to go pretty quickly with Pebble League? Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm done. Alright, well, I think that was a really solid run, Hero. Well, thanks for giving me the chance of showcasing Pocket Park Wii on this marathon. Yeah, no problem. And thanks everyone who watched. That's in here. Alright, so just start getting set up for the... Hello? Hello, hello. Yeah, ready for Puzzle League now? Alright. Reconnecting. Okay.
god, they were posting yeah, before. Yeah. Well, see ya. The uh, balance is okay. Uh, did you change the loafer recording at all? Or should I do that now? Sorry, what was that? Hmm? Uh, the loafer recording, have you changed it over yet? Or should no, I, I have not. Now? I forgot to stop the loafer recording. Don't worry, uh, we'll find it right now. I don't think I can because you're editing yeah. the uh, adding the window. Brady got the coordinates. Speed this up by a lot. Oh, okay. Is that why you're doing it? Yeah. Alright. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was like, what am I doing wrong? Nothing oh at all. God. Just oh after god, it's the, Ash. The play. Like, oh my god, it's Ash. Mute it, mute it, mute it. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Always, always love the reactions. Especially the first time reactions to Puzzle League. They're, they're always uh, amusing. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I've ever actually really seen Puzzle League too much. Oh, uh, well, it's, uh, it, there's a, there's definitely a learning curve to it, and there's a bit of randomness to it, but, uh, but uh, I really, I really enjoy it for some reason. <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not a game that you can optimize real well. But uh, well, there's nothing wrong with liking a game. I mean, if you like playing it, then I'm glad you speedrun a game that you enjoy playing. I mean, you can't really argue with that. But speedrunners are, but speedrunners aren't supposed to enjoy their game because if they speedrun, they're gonna start to get sick of it. <laughs> Believe me, I can verify that. <laughs> but, but, no, Alright, no, I'm ready to go. So, as right, soon as I don't, I don't think we. Hang on. 